Today, we're going to be helping an out-of-state investor named Carlo invest in a triplex in the Cleveland market. Let's dive in. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Hey, folks, welcome to another episode of the MLS Search and Analysis Show. I'm your host, James Wise, and this is the show on Holton Wise TV where we work together one on one, right? You folks out there get me, you get my team, and we help you do everything from a top to bottom basis in regards to real estate investing, right? It starts with due diligence. It starts with understanding if your deal is good. And then, of course, we could follow that up with buyer agency, property management, construction, maintenance, insurance, title insurance, the whole nine, right? So what we are doing today specifically for my man, Carlo, Carlo is an investor out in California and he saw this property right Carlo you saw this and you're like hey James I dig this one let me know what your thoughts are on it so let's take a look right 3130 West 30th Cleveland Ohio 44109 it's been on the market almost two months listed at ninety four thousand nine hundred dollars what this is is this is a pretty big cash cow brother this this has the ability uh, to bring in a ton of money because we have a duplex up front and then we have a single family home in the back. Now, as far as the rent roll goes, what we have on the screen for you, this is the rent roll. Uh, we have 700 and 675 coming in out of the two two-bedroom units, right? That's the duplex. Those are already tenanted. Those are already occupied. And as far as that 1000 a month, that would be the market rent of the single-family home, right? So when it's all said and done, we could be bringing in 2375 a month, right? Super cash cow. As far as what we have, right, the listing agents, they've provided us photos, uh, of the duplex units, okay? So you can see nothing special, right? They didn't uh, by any means go above and beyond when they renovated this stuff, right? They just put in like your minimal, uh, <clears throat> you know, your minimal finishes, right? I would personally have liked to see things be a little bit nicer. Like when Holton Wise renovates units, we like to do things a little bit different, right? Like this right here, this is just a prime example of a landlord going in and doing the minimum, right? They went with carpet because carpet in the short run is cheaper than refinishing the hardwoods underneath, right? That's okay in the short term because you're saving a little bit of money on your turnover, but you're really hurting yourself in the long term because this is going to need to get swapped out probably every other tenant or every tenant, right? And then on the walls, what they did is they go the same color, right? They go the same color on the trim with the wall, which is cheaper, right? When you're paying folks to paint, they don't have to cut it in, things of that nature, but you're not going to attract a higher quality tenant. So you can tell that the, the current owner wanted to get things done as cheap as humanly possible. Like here is another example. You'll see this in a lot of low-income rentals, right? What they did is they took the hardwood flooring and instead of uh, refinishing it and putting like a stain down, uh, they actually just painted it brown with a deck paint, right? So just so you know, you're going to be inheriting a property that's probably going to have a lot of... Um, deferred maintenance and, and and the current owner has just looked for the cheapest possible way to do everything this kitchen in one of the duplex units so i do like this kitchen right you got the home depot lowe's quality cabinetry nothing wrong there but you know with the finishes this guy or gal did they did get tenants in there as far as the back house we do not have any photos of this back house right we got nothing to go off of we got the 675 and the 700 here we have no photos of the interior of that home. All we know is the listing agent said with a little bit of work, uh, it should be ready to go. And we will have no problem after a renovation getting a Section 8 tenant into that back house for 1000 a month. But as far as like what we have to do, that uh, hasn't really been provided to us. So what I have done is I have budgeted for a full renovation on that unit right which is why i think we should pick this up a little bit cheaper than what they're asking right they're asking 94.9 i'd like to see you pick it up at ninety thousand dollars now if you pick it up at 90 
I am budgeting $25,000 for us to renovate that back house. And what that's going to entail is a full cosmetic reno. New fixtures in the kitchen, new fixtures in the bath, full patching of holes in the walls, repainting the entire home, right? And that's going to be an agreeable gray paint on the walls with a white trim, uh, you know, with a white around the trim, right? And then as far as the floors go, it's going to be refinishing all the hardwoods in the property so you have nice... Uh, flowing, good-looking hardwood floors, not the brown deck-painted floors we've seen in the duplex. And then as far as the kitchen and the bath go, they will not have those hardwoods, though. What they will have is matching vinyl, right? So from a cosmetic standpoint, we can do all of that for approximately $20,000. Now, I've left $5,000 above and beyond that for unknowns, things we're not sure of, right? Other things in that back house, right? Is the roof screwed up? If so, we need to spend the five on a roof. Maybe that's not the issue, but maybe we have an issue with the hot water tank and the furnace. Furnace is about three Gs. Hot water tanks are about a G, right? So with the limited information we have right now, I think 25 is a very reasonable budget to fix up that back house, right? We'll, of course, know more after a third-party home inspection. But as of right now, going into this assuming approximately $25,000 is going to need to be spent in that back house to get her ready to rock and roll. That's what we got to do. But once you're uh, all said and done with that, brother, that's going to be a cash cow for you, right? $2,375 comes in. I anticipate you spending $1,100, leaving you with $1,275 in NOI. Now, that would amount to a 13.3 cap. And as far as financing goes, what you need to understand here, though, is financing can sometimes be a crapshoot on these type of properties. What you have is a grandfathered in non-conforming property. Okay, what that means is back in the day, right, building codes were different. They weren't as strict, right? Zoning regulations weren't as strict. So it wasn't a problem. Uh, to, in a city lot, build another home behind your home, right? So we have a duplex with a single family behind it all on one parcel. Today, in 2020, you can't do that, right? You can't buy a duplex in the city of Cleveland and then decide to build a single family home in the backyard. That's no longer allowed for that zoning, right? So this is what's called non-conforming use. It doesn't conform to the current zoning. But you don't have to tear it down because it's grandfathered in, okay? But the issue lies... Uh, Say the home uh, burned down, okay? Everything burned down. The lender, lenders have issues loaning on these properties sometimes because they're non-conforming. So if the home were to burn down, it's hard for the lender uh, to justify the risk of making you the loan because you're not allowed to rebuild it in the same way, right? So. Are you a lender? If so, Holton Wise is looking to partner with you. If you're licensed in all 50 states, go to HoltonWise.com. Click the digital media tab to advertise on Holton Wise TV today. Refinancing is going to be a crapshoot. So what I recommend you do, financing or refinancing could be a crapshoot, right? So if you do buy it, if you do buy it cash at the 115 and then you, uh, well, you buy it cash at the 90 rather, then you put in the 25. You're all into this investment for 115 k As far as like what it would reappraise for, like I wouldn't look at this as like a burr uh, deal here because I don't really know uh, what it would appraise for because you're, the amount of lenders you're going to be able to work with is going to be so much smaller, right? So it, again, it's a crapshoot. There's really no true comps and what they're going to appraise it for. Uh, it could be all over the place, you know, it could be hit or miss. So I, I think it's very, we need to go at this very conservatively and assume when you do find a lender who's willing to loan it, because I'm not saying all lenders will not do this deal. You could very much get financed. And I have a whole list of lenders for you guys. Sales at HoldenWise.com. If you want the list, send me an email, send my team an email. We'll get you that list. So I'm not saying you can't finance the asset. But what I'm telling you guys is you're going to run into roadblocks financing this asset. Not every lender is going to do it, right? So I don't want to stand up here and, and project out a, a higher ARV for you. Could I sell it fully occupied, bringing in almost $30,000 a year in rent for more than one fifteen? Yeah, I could probably sell it for like one forty, one fifty. As far as from you, from your financing perspective, though, I don't really know what you'll get it to appraise for. So I did this, this a number analysis for you very conservatively, stating that 
if you did refi it out, they would only give you the value that you have in, which is 115, thus meaning you'd have 28,750 into the deal and would still net it off as a 38.1% cash on cash return. Who knows? If you talk to many lenders and you do a lot of legwork, you do a lot of groundwork, perhaps you can get a lender uh, to give you a much higher value. But again, you know, I just need you to understand, Carlo, that this is not a traditional property. It's non-conforming, so it is totally going to be a crapshoot from a bank financing perspective. So your best bet would be to pay for it cash if that's the route you want to go and then work to get it reappraised later. But again, your values can be be all over the place, right? So that's my thoughts on this property, Carlo. I do like the property. Financing issues aside, it's going to be a solid cash cow and it's near the metro health area guys you know i like metro health right we get in that area right now for super cheap we put in section 8 tenants to alleviate the risks of a higher risk neighborhood and then we hope knock on wood that uh, we're going to get some serious back end icing on that cake with neighborhood gentrification because the Metro Health campus is right in this neighborhood and they are investing a billion dollars into their campus and the surrounding neighborhood, right? So all told, Carl, I think it's a good deal. I, th I think you find yourself a good property, but there are a few issues with it that I needed to make you aware of, which I have now done. So if you want my team to help you purchase this property, just reply to the private link and we'll start negotiating on your behalf. We'll, of course, want to make the contract contingent on that third-party home inspection so we get the inspector in there. And then we'll go from there, see what the seller says. Everybody else, if uh, this episode of the MLS Search and Analysis Show appeals to you, if you're looking to invest in the Cleveland market and you'd like some one-on-one uh, -on -one work with me and my team, just go ahead and send us an email, sales at holtonwise.com. Include your phone number. We'll set up a time, give you a call, talk to you about what we do, what we could do for you. And then most importantly, we'll get all your information, right? We'll understand what you're trying to do, what you're trying to accomplish, uh, what your goals, wants, needs are. And hopefully it all works out and we could help you start, build, or grow your own real estate portfolio. New viewers out there, if you just came across Holton Wise TV through one of the other websites we post all these shows on or just Googling stuff, I want you guys to do yourself a solid, stick around, smash that subscribe button, because Holton Wise TV is real estate investing made easy. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.